Can we start with your mother? Is that? Yes. Because yes. it kind of it is, ahead. you know, yeah. you've got the Persephone Demeter thing yes. right in the, the title, the hologram yes. reference. Yes. My mother died of ovarian cancer, and she was 42 when she died. And she left five children, the ages ranging from 12 to 19. And um, uh, families don't always do too well when mothers die. And uh, nobody knew at the time uh, that there was a genetic component to uh, women's cancers. And, and it wasn't until, until the mid-90s that um, medical science moved on to identify the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes um, as involved in the development of these kinds of cancers. And you knew that y you had the, the genetic... Um we call it a mutation. mutation. Yeah, you call it a what, what the scientists call it a, a deleterious mutation. So basically, um, the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes seem to work um, by uh, to suppress rogue cells where cells have copied themselves and made errors in DNA. Um, and and normally our bodies work to clear up those errors. And in women with a mutation and men, because men can also carry this mutation, these mutations, in uh, people with a mutation of the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene, the mechanism to clear up the faulty cells isn't working properly. And basically those cells with the faulty DNA go on to replicate and cause tumors. And I learned that I had tested positive for a mutation on the BRCA1 gene in February 2005 because of another relative, a cousin, who had developed early stage breast cancer at the same age as my mother was when she died. Um, basically, with, with women who carry uh, a mutation on the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, uh, one of the signs, or the smoking gun, if you look at the family history, is women developing breast or ovarian cancer at a young age, because these, can these cancers tend to strike younger than they would uh, with normal women. At the same time you were going for a regular BRCA check? Yes. You did a breast exam and felt something kind of yes, odd? Yes, that's right. Um, so I was, I had made a very painful decision to have my ovaries removed because sadly when you discover that you um, have tested positive for mutation of the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene, the, the geneticists explain to you that you have this very high chance of developing breast or ovarian cancer over your life. And the only serious way of reducing your risk dramatically is removal of the tissue that might develop cancer. I'd made the decision to remove my ovaries because I'd watched my own mother die of ovarian cancer because although I went and talked to quite a number of ovarian cancer specialists and there was no reliable screening test for ovarian cancer and because my children were very little and I didn't see that I had the right really to not, not to do that surgery. But I, I fled from the whole idea of bilateral mastectomy in horror. I just left that and I thought I would be safe having regular mammograms. So that's what we did. We did re regular mammograms and it was um, when I was reporting to the genetics clinic on my annual checkup that I, I did a self-examination and found a lump in my left breast and we went from there. I, I had breast cancer. We are a breast-obsessed culture. Yes, we are a breast-obsessed culture. And it's, it's very hard. I mean, I think when I was reacting to the, the situation that I was in, I mean, part of that reaction was the complete horror, um, you know, as a woman with the, with the idea of that, um, that solution. I mean, it reduces your risk of de developing breast cancer by 90%. So it was a serious um, breast uh, risk reduction strategy to have prophylactic mastectomies, but my mind fled from it in complete horror. Um, and certainly it isn't easy, but uh, nowadays, um, you know, reconstructive surgery has moved on, and you can have breast reconstructions that uh, go some way towards replacing your breasts. I mean, it, it, it's not the same as having your own breasts. I miss my breasts, but it's not the end of the world. It's something that you can survive. I heard some people say uh, cancer is the best thing that ever happened to them. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I've 
heard someone on the radio say, that's total crap. It's a horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> Shut up. Um, and I, but are you, I think, somewhere in between? Yes, I am somewhere in between. I, I would definitely rather, it, I couldn't possibly wish that that had ever happened to me. And if you ask me to repeat any of it, I would start a run a marathon with no problem whatsoever. But um, there are some things that it um, helps you with. So um, one of the things that happened to me is that I became very focused. It, it was a, like a white light of clarity about what I wanted to do with my life. So when I was diagnosed, I, I wasn't very happy in my work. I'd been wanting to change for a long time, but I, we needed the money, so I didn't make a tough decision. When I was diagnosed, it was very clear to me that I just wanted to look after my children, myself, and then I made a decision to write a book, even though you know, I didn't know what would come of it. And um, things like that are very clarifying. And you lose fear in a way. I mean, probably I would never have done, I would never have written about the things that I've written or taken the journey that I've taken without getting cancer. I wouldn't be sitting here in Toronto talking to you. It's strange, you know, it, 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 in a way it liberates you from caution, prudence, ways that you might have been living a sort of um, life more like a mouse down a sock, you know, according to your fears, rather than what you might do or what you might achieve. And in that way, it can blast out some dust, but that's, that's the merit of it. Apart from that, it's, it's just hell, and I wouldn't recommend it. The book is Eating Pomegranates, a memoir of mothers, daughters, and the breast cancer gene. I've been speaking with the author, Sarah Gabriel, and Eating Pomegranates, published by Bond Street Books, distributed in Canada by Doubleday.